Welcome to the North Lakes Podcast. In this episode, we will be talking about federally qualified health centers with North Lakes CEO Reba Rice. Why would we be talking about FQHCs? Well, mainly because we are one. Reba Rice, thank you for being here. Well, thanks for asking me. It's an honor. Yeah. Do you mind telling us, uh, well, we already know your name, but uh, what you do here at North Lakes Community Clinic? Yeah, I am the chief executive officer here at North Lakes. What does that mean? <laughs> That's a great question. You tell me, Jeremy. Well, I um, I think you, you're you're our boss. I'm not. I mean, I know you probably wouldn't describe it that way, but there's like you know what was that sign on Harry Truman's desk? The buck stops here. Oh right. I don't know if you look at it that way, but I guess from where I am, that's where I see it. I don't know if you like that or not. Yeah, I mean, I think I feel like. There are other people at North Lakes, all the other successes, all the successes that we have are the responsibility of others and all of the failures or ways that we fall short are mine. Oh, well, geez. Okay, Harry. <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, it's not it's not a bad it's not a bad way to look at it, really, because it frees up people to make mistakes, which I think is really important. Thank you. Mm-hmm. So if I misrecord this. I'm, we'll do it again. This is your fault. <laughs> yes, okay. that's correct. Um, how did you come to be involved with the North Lakes Community Clinic? Yeah, so I was never intending to be in healthcare. I am an English major, and that would probably be if somebody said, what are the most important things about you? One of the top three would be I'm an English major. So never intended to be in healthcare, but through a variety of different circumstances ended up uh managing a small clinic in Ashland. And as that clinic manager got involved in the creation of the Lakes Community Health Center and just fell in love with the model because it's all about social justice and about making sure that people have access to really important uh, resources. And that's really my passion, which doesn't sound very English majory, I guess, but um, it is really sort of what makes me tick. So that the, the fact that we could do that here at, at uh, North Lakes is really what made me excited about it and made me willing to put my name in the hat as we looked for a CEO back in 2008. And um, 15 years. 15 years. Um, So talk a little bit about what that model is. Um, We're kind of basing this. The reason I wanted to talk to you specifically was that we're coming up on uh, National Community Health Center Week. So do you mind describing a little bit what a community health center is? And sometimes we also call it a federally qualified health center or a FQHC. Right. Yeah. So FQHCs are uh, community-based organizations that provide comprehensive primary and preventive care. And that is included, but certainly not limited to medical, oral health, and mental health services um, to people of all ages, of all abilities to pay, of um, of their health insurance, regardless of their health insurance status. So we focus on underserved populations. So for us here at North Lakes, that's a rural population mostly. Um, and so populations that experience geographic, financial, or cultural barriers to care, um, that's the reason that we exist, to make sure that access to care is is possible for everybody. Um, also, we're specifically encouraged to focus on what we call the social drivers of health. So the things outside of, you know, my BMI or my blood pressure or the number of cavities that I may have um, that impact my health. And so community health centers or federally qualified health centers spend a lot of time thinking uh, about asking questions about and addressing social drivers of health. Um, We do, one of the things that's kind of special about community health centers is that we get a government grant that allows us to provide a sliding fee scale. So if folks are uninsured or underinsured and low income, um, they can get their services for a discount. Um, And here at North Lakes, uh, if you're 100% of the federal poverty level or below, you can get your services for absolutely nothing. Um, And so we all, and all also, we get uh, some enhanced reimbursement from payers like Medicaid and Medicare, and um, and of course we get that government grant, which helps us with the sliding fee scale. Um, and so it, it's a it's a model of care focused on underserved populations, recognizing that prevention and access to care are going to make an enormous difference in terms of the health of a community. 
So it's like the way that you just described it, it almost sounds like we're a government agency. Right. That's a common misconception um, that I know you don't have. Um, so I, I'm throwing you softballs here. Rita. Yes. And I appreciate that. <laughs> yes. As we get into this, I, I will I will definitely appreciate the softballs. Um, so, no, we're not a government organization. We are a private nonprofit Um the grant is given to us to provide those services. And certainly there are a lot of strings attached. There's no free money, especially from the government, which is just fine with us. So we provide a lot of data to the government um, that's 100% de-identified data. So it's there's no way to track it to our specific patients, but um, we give them a lot of information about uh, the kinds of services that we offer, the the, the costs of that, et cetera. And, um, and for that, the government gives us um, money to do that. Uh, sliding fee scale. I, I, I've described it as like we kind of fill a gap, you know, mm-hmm. so like and I, the example I use is because I, you know, I'm familiar with that as an Iron River. The, the gap there was distance. It was location. So it wasn't necessarily financial. But I, I don't know. I just love that. And that I love like we will go into some areas and offer some services, but not others, because there are already plenty of those services there. Right. Absolutely. That that collaborative model is a really important part of community health centers. We're not designed to do it all. We need our community partners. And so it is about um, figuring out what does the community need from them. We don't know. We ask them. So if somebody, if we're lucky enough to have a community reach out to us and say, can you please help us with X? We ask a ton of questions first, right? About who else is already doing that and why don't you have it? And what resources are already here? What What is the specific need? Um, because oftentimes uh, communities will not really, they won't have, they just assume that they need. Um, and uh, and so they'll ask, they'll say, can you come in and, you know, can you offer services two days a week? And we'll say, oh, well, okay, how, what, what would that, how would that help? And because what's happening the other five days of the week? And so who's, who's accessing care where? And why would it be helpful to have X service just a little bit? Um, and usually at the end of that conversation, we figure out, yeah, that's actually not going to work. It's just that we need this specific service all the time. And so... That's why North Lakes clinics are all different. And sometimes it's just behavioral health or just dental. And and it might be, well, what about the person that's already offering that service or that person or could be a person right. or that agency that's already in your community? Exactly. You know, what about them? Right. And sometimes, you know, I, I, I won't I won't lie. Sometimes the, the um, community members come to us because they have a little bit of a beef with that community member. And that's not our jam. Right. Right. But um, I'm, and here's a guess is that, you know, I, I think that North Lakes has a good re- reputation in a lot of ways, maybe even a great reputation. And so a community would get excited about us coming in because we offer goods. I'm bragging. We offer a quality service. Yeah, I think that's true. And and in some communities, we certainly have a very good reputation. But I think part of that has been earned by not stepping on people's toes. Right. Like we have we don't just have a good reputation with, um, you know, people who want services. We also have a good reputation with people who are offering services because we're not willing to compete with them. And even if we go into a community, say like Ashland, where we opened a dental clinic in 2009, and there were already dentists there, but we went around to every single one of them and said, we are really going to focus on Medicaid patients and low-income uninsured uh, patients. And we would really like to refer the commercial paying uh, um, uh, patients to you because then that'll give us more access to see the Medicaid patients. And we'd really love you to refer the Medicaid patients to us. So there's plenty of work to go around. It's just about um, finding what are the, what are the populations that make most sense for us? And, and how do we, how do we serve our community uh, together? Because that, that it makes a great positive impact on the community when all the care providers work together. That really makes so much difference. And so it behooves us as we're going into communities to ensure that we're welcome there by, by everybody. Um, and so we spend a, a lot of time and energy on that. And um, 
I think I think, and I always I I, th- I think of a, a phrase that you had is like some people may not think of us as partners, but we always think of them as partners. Correct. That's exactly right. I say that all the time. Yes. Like it's okay. You want to compete with us? Cool for you. Like if that's your model, I I don't. I'm not offended. <laughs> um, but that's not our model, and so it's not because I'm a superior person. It's just that the work I'm here to do is collaborate, as opposed to, um, you know, serve a, a specific corporate entity or to um, or to make a dollar for our investors or whatever. I mean, those are all good business models, right? But the quote unquote business model of the community health center is to collaborate with community partners. Yes. Um, and, you know, and I, I think of like, you know, that could include county agencies, not even necessarily private practices, but other, you know, government entities. Right. It does. It includes a lot of different um, partners and we collaborate with different partners in a variety of different ways. I, I think of collaboration in a really broad sense, right? So um, one of the things that I'm most proud of in terms of our ability to collaborate is um, is the fact that we raise money for a lot of organizations and, um, and that like that's money talks, right? Like that's real. Um, and, and f- for, for me, um, the idea of just getting together and talking about stuff is not collaborating. Like, I mean, that's good. You have to build relationships. You have to know what each other's doing. There's nothing wrong with talking. Um, but if we all sit around a table and talk about what we're going to do, and then we go back and just do that thing, whether we heard everybody else at the table saying that they were going to do it, um, it doesn't feel like real collaboration. So for us, getting to the table and saying, what do you want to do? And listening and then saying, OK, we'll not do that. We'll do the other stuff. And this is how we can work together to make that happen. Hmm. So, um, ta- and of course, we're not the only one. You know, North Lakes Community Clinic is not the only community health center in the state of Wa- uh, Wisconsin or the nation. Do you mind just kind of painting a, a broader picture of what that is like? Like, there's the, there we're all over the country, right? Yeah, we are. Um, we're really actually proud to be, even though we're all individual nonprofits, right? We are we are the largest primary care network um, in the country because there are about 13, 14 hundred um, community health centers. And I say it like that because it's a dynamic number, right? People are becoming community health centers uh, all the time. And so the, the number changes. And um, But in, in fact, we operate almost 10,000 different sites across the country, which is really cool. Um, and each of us have a different mission, but it's all pretty similar. It's all about providing care uh, that's respectful and that isn't based on people's ability to pay and that is culturally appropriate and that removes barriers for people because those are the reasons that we exist. Um, and so as unique as we all are, we do form a network um, that is a very effective safety net um, for for people across the country. Um, and in particular, um, underserved populations, as I mentioned earlier, um, is a really important part of what we do because when, when populations aren't served with healthcare services, um, there are a lot of hard things that happen there. It's not just about poorer health, right? It's also that those communities are often not empowered. There's There are other symptoms and other outcomes of not having healthcare um, services available. And so getting into those communities and being there, being an employer there, being a community um, development force there, being a, uh, a, a, collaborator, a collaborator uh, there, all of those things are really important in the health of a community even if there are people who don't utilize the services of the health center. And another phrase that you come up with or that I've heard since being here is that, um, you know, it's hard to um, worry about your health if you don't have a place to live. Yeah, right. I, and which I, I don't think that's exactly what you were saying, but that's what triggered yeah. a thought in my mind. Yeah. <clears throat> the way that we work with social determinants of health is through our community health workers and patient supports. You want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, that's a great uh, sort of definitive um, factor of community health centers. Um, We have uh, community health workers who are uh, people who work with uh, the folks who use our services who have barriers like um, transportation or housing or employment, 
uh, financial issues um, to try to find resources in the community, often that are not part of North Lakes, that they can um, tap into to help them reduce whatever barriers they have. There are some things that we can do for them, like we can um, enroll them in prescription assistance programs or um, our patient financial advocates can enroll them in our sliding fee scale program or we get them help, we can help get them connected to Medicaid or Medicare. Um, so there are a variety of different community resources we can help with. Um, housing is a huge issue that everybody's experiencing for which we have absolutely no magic wand. I mean, we just don't, there's nothing. Uh, um, but there are a lot of resources around food and education and employment and transportation even um, that that um, we can connect people to. Um, and the recognition there is just that um, those barriers are real and they um, they have an impact on people's willingness and ability to access healthcare services. And when people don't access healthcare services, um, they uh, they get sicker, obviously, and then they um, cost more to the system. And so it's a financial thing as well as just a fairness or a justice uh, thing. It's also, that's why one of the reasons that um, community health centers have been supported on a bipartisan basis, because you don't have to, uh, you don't have to look past the numbers um, and, and that is really helpful um, for Congress because they can make a financial case and then they can also make the moral case, right? Or the social case, um, which they they love to do. We're taking care of the people in our, in our district and that's an important piece. So it fits both bills. So, so you yeah. could say it's financially um, beneficial as well as um, health and welfare beneficial. Right. Which makes it a bipartisan issue. Yeah, exactly. Hmm. Yeah. Um, so, t you know, before I should have asked earlier, but how did North Lakes come to be? Like, how did it come together? Yeah. Um, uh, that's a little bit of a complicated question because North Lakes is actually a combination of three different um, federally qualified health centers and multiple smaller organizations who have all over time decided to become one organization. And um, so the short answer is uh, that in a variety of different communities, um, members of that community got together and said, hey, there's a need for some service and we'd like to fill it. Um, and so in three of those communities, in, in uh, Lakewood and in Minong and in Iron River, the groups got together and said, hey, let's apply for a grant and, and become a federally qualified health center. In the other communities, um, because we've uh, uh, brought on about 10 small practices, um, they found other ways. We, they just were a dentist and they set up a dental clinic or whatever, right? Um, so all of those, the, the longer story or the other half of the story, it's not longer, um, but the other half of that story is um, that two FQHCs, Northwood, and the lakes, um, who were each too small to be sustainable, got together and decided we'd be stronger together. And so we merged and we brought our boards together and we took a long time. We took over a year to figure out how to make that work. And, um, and we became a new organization and changed our name from Northwoods and the lakes to North Lakes. Um, and uh, since that time, um, we have developed a competency around that, around making sure that communities don't lose resources or um, even that the resources that are currently being offered are uh, maybe not quite enough as identified by the people who are offering those services. So a uh, behavioral health clinic will come to us and say, uh, hey, we've been offering services in this community for 20 years and we're getting towards retirement and we, we want this to continue. And so can you help us with that? Or I, I have not been taking a salary for the last five years and I'm running this organization um, and I can't afford to do that anymore. Or I just feel like it's time to stop that and to, and to um, maybe make sure that this organization can grow. And, uh, um, and so can I be part of North Lakes? Um, so where we are the weird and wonderful shape that we are because um, that's how we've responded. And in each of those cases, we've grown the practice. Um, 
that came to us as the community has requested and, and needed that. And um, I'll, I'll choose Turtle Lake because I was kind of there and saw like a... Well, you'll tell the story better than I do. No, is that I, a good example? Yeah, it's a great example, right? Like the um, the Patrick Liedel had a little clinic, a couple of chairs, you know, a hygienist or two, right? Just a small practice, um, and and only only dental. And they he was seeing a ton of Medicaid patients, and so he was losing his shirt. Also, like accepting barter. I mean, bless his heart, right? Doing all the right things and recognizing that people who couldn't afford um, oral health care, st- still deserved oral health care. And so they came to us and said, hey, could we part- be part of uh, North Lakes? And we were super enthusiastic about that. And so we asked the um, the folks who work there, what what are the other services that you think would be needed? And they were like, oh, behavioral health, so important. We really need behavioral health. It's just such a lack. We need more dental. Um, and so now in Turtle Lake, we have three dentists and for behavioral health therapists and a recovery program and a chiropractor. And um, and so we've really grown those services based on what it is the community needs. And do you want to talk maybe just a little bit more of the economics of that? So like what made it possible or like what is it about North Lakes or FQHCs that makes that possible? Yeah, maybe a better question for Brian, but since he's not here, <laughs> um, I'll play CFO for okay. a moment. Um, so it really is about... Brian is our chief financial officer. Thank you, Brian, our fabulous chief financial officer. Um, so it's about our reimbursement structure and the federal support for the discounted services. So as I said, we get a federal grant that allows us to charge very low fees for people who don't have adequate income and insurance, and that's really expensive. And so that federal support makes that possible for us. That's really important, right? Most small practices just cannot afford to give away a lot of care. It's not because they're not great human beings. It's because they can't afford to do it. And we get support to do that. Um, And then also Medicaid and Medicare uh, recognize that our kind of health care is really culturally appropriate for their beneficiaries. And so um, uh, all the data that community health centers provide to the government, because that's government insurance, right, um, helps them to make good policy and to understand what what we bring to the table there. And so they provide a higher reimbursement for us uh, to cover the non-billable services um, that we offer um, and that make us a really great fit, like this, the community health workers, um, like nutrition therapy, which is, their, nutrition therapy is billable in some ways and in, for some insurance companies, but not all. Um, but our patient financial advocates, our, our nurses, et cetera, so a variety of different um, uh, services that are not necessarily billable um, are provided for through our cost-based reimbursement from Medicaid and Medicare. And um, that's sort of, in a nutshell, how we stay afloat. And by um, because we have gotten a bit larger. It's not so if there is a change in that funding somewhere along the lines, it's not going to sink the ship. Oh, There's correct. enough like kind of we, we've grown large enough than lots of different income streams make it possible so we're not as vulnerable. That's exactly right, Jeremy. We uh, have a really diverse um, income stream um, based on all the different services we offer, all the different insurance companies that we work with, all of the different grants that we get, right? So um, we do a lot of work to make sure that we uh, maintain our financial sustainability and um, and it, and we have a lot of vehicles to do that with. Mm-hmm. So we, this kind of reminds me like, like, so what is challenging about an FQHC? And like, I think economics anywhere is going to be challenging, but are there some, um, you know, what are some unique problems or challenges that an FQHC would has? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, and I'd love to hear your perspective um, on, on what you think is challenging because you spend a lot of time looking outward um, uh, from the organization. But um, I, I think um, for me, it's the variety and depth of the work that we are charged with doing. There are so much work and there are so many ways to do it. And so you can't get caught up um, on the perfect way to do it. You can't let the perfect be the enemy of the good, right? And that's always a challenge because 
We have so many visionaries here at North Lakes and they have a lot of great ideas about how we can do things. Um, and we just can't do them all. Um, and so choosing what, what to do and choosing how to do it, um, uh, is really a challenge. And I think, uh, honestly, North Lakes makes it look easy, but it, but it isn't. Uh, it's the reason that it looks easy is that we do have a really tenured leadership team and we have the most amazing group of human beings who are just ready to rock. It, you know, we say, let's go to Rice Lake. And they're like, yeah, let's go to Rice Lake in a month. So, I, I mean, who, who it's an amazing group of people who are willing to do almost anything to serve almost any community uh and but that's not that's not free and it's not for nothing it's it's a real challenge um it, it, but we all bear it together so you know it's like it's divided amongst us and so it doesn't feel heavy um and I guess you kind of threw a question my way. And yeah. I just think the sheer volume of need is a, you know, like, sure, we come up with great ideas of how to do things. But I mean, still, it is like there are a lot of people that don't have health care. Yeah. And even as great a job as we're doing, I, I mean, we're not people, doing all of it. Right. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, so and that's hard. And I mean, I'm going to guess that's my phrase. I say that all the time. I'm going to guess. Uh -huh. Um you, like you, it's got to be hard when an organization that is doing good work and they come to us, they want the help. And there's probably been times you've had to say, we can't, it's not a good fit for us. Yeah, that happens. And it is really hard. And especially because sometimes in those cir circumstances, people feel like, no, 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 no. I am a really good fit. <laughs> and most of the time it's true, right? But we just can't do everything. And so um, either, you know, if we could wait or if there are some things that could change. Um, and sometimes we just take a risk, right? And we do something that maybe isn't the highest and best use. But again, we just don't let the perfect be the enemy of the good. And so we just, you know, there's a lot of energy around this. Um, we tend to sort of follow that, right? When things just fall into place because pushing against things is just really hard. And like you said, there are so many people who have needs that are not met. So that's what we're pushing against. The the fact that there are always going to be people who are underserved. So I don't want to push against people who are trying to serve them. So this is your 15 for you, if I may, like, which I, you told me that the other day and I'm like, ah, because mm -hmm. I, I think when I originally wrote this question, I was like 10 years in mm -hmm. and I was like, so, um, but like over like that, like what has surprised you and like, maybe like, what is, what is a success story? That's, those are two big questions. They are big questions. Yeah. Um, and I, and I have sort of a not great answer, I think, for both of them. So I guess the one thing that has really surprised me is that I'm still here. Like, I, <laughs> I never thought that I would have a healthcare career that was 20 years long or plus. I mean, I'm keep I'm going to keep going. Um, but uh, so there, there are surprises every single day. And, and that so I guess I'm not surprised by being surprised anymore. Um, so, and some of them are exciting and some of them are not so good. Right. Um, but I, um, I think the, um, part of what has been surprising is how hard it is to do the kind of work we want to do. And it's not that we're the people, individuals and teams are not doing excellent work. They are, um, but, and we talk about how hard integration of services is. We talk about how hard collaboration is, but, um, what, what I find surprising is how hard it is to create the structure that makes working together um, the easy thing to do. It's just really easy in our day to day to do our work and to prioritize that. Um, and as much as we uh, are focused on wanting to um, change that so that we really prioritize collaboration and prioritize team-based care. Um, it really is a, 
it really is a challenge. And, and I don't think I thought it would be that hard. Like I thought, if you let people do this, they will do it. And the fact is that it's, it takes a lot more than that. So what, what, what has some of that push, I don't know if you want to call it pushback, but what are the, what problems like emerge that you were like, I didn't see that coming. Well, I, I thought that if, for example, like our, I came from a medical clinic where the providers that I worked with, the doctors that I worked with, saw 25 to 30 patients a day. And so, and they didn't have time to help their patients think about um, transportation or how to pay for their medication or mental health issues or whatever, right? Because they were really doing excellent care. Providing the care. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but they didn't have time um, to to think about those other things. So we don't see anywhere near that number of patients, but it's not because our providers don't care that they don't still don't have the time um, or it's about it just takes an inordinate amount of coordination in schedules in what kind of questions you have in understanding what the resources are and in, in a variety of people like even if you think about well just get the team together and talk about all the things well what team like the team for me it includes medical the team for somebody else includes medical and dental. The team for somebody else reco is recovery and behavioral health and dental. And some people it's occupational and speech therapy and behavioral health. So like there is no one team. And so how the logistics, the just the sheer logistics of allowing care teams to talk to each other in the way that it would take to truly coordinate care happens because our people are miracle workers, but by definition, miracles don't happen 50 times a day in everybody's life, right? So it, 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 I hoped that by decreasing the number of patients that we saw, by making all of these amazing resources available right there in the clinic, that that would be enough. And it, and it, and it is sometimes, but it isn't always. And so that's a, a surprise to me, uh, even 15 years in, um, and also a challenge that is just not going to go away, I think. So uh, it, it's just there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. And and I like I, do, I can't think of a way that we could do it. I mean, we can't all have each other on the screen all the time and be like tap, 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 tap. You know? Yeah. So but was there a moment of like, have you seen like... <laughs> You know, lightning. Oh, yeah. You know, have like have there been moments you're like, it's it's happening, look. Yes, mm -hmm. beautiful moments. So many of them. So many of them, right? Where like a patient just happens to say, Hey, I need X and somebody just happens to be walking by and the dentist can just grab them and they can go work on it and they just happen to get a resource available to that and uh, and then they, you know, they know that the person needs behavioral health. And so they reach out to that person and get them a, you know, and all behind the scenes. And so it's like Dorothy on the little conveyor belt, you know, going through the Oz, like just by the time the person leaves the clinic that day, they have all kinds of resources that they never intended to. I, but just by chance, there is a crib in my car. Right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I, it's crazy how many times that has actually happened. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, that like kind of the coordination of care, um, big challenge, something I don't see in the marketing department. It's not something I'm involved in at all. Right. What else? What are some other challenges that you, that have come up or that you foresee or, or persist? Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, challenges. There are so many. Um, and so, sorry, are you asking about challenges that stick or challenges that we've overcome? What are some challenges that you've overcome? Uh-huh. Um, so it's an interesting question and, and maybe overcome is a strong word, um, for it, but, um, aren't as big a priority. Right. Or, or like are better than they were. Mm -hmm. Right. Sure. Um, uh, so p p I think, um, we're a hard place to work because we change a lot and, um, and 
you know, there, that's that's hard for s- almost everybody, and certainly for some folks more than others, especially if that means that resources or attention is taken away from things that are sort of in the middle of happening, which does happen at North Lakes. Um, but uh, I think one thing that we've addressed related to that that's, that's kind of a success is... Um, that community health centers are supposed to be community-based organizations, right? And we have grown to be a 20,000 square mile service area and, um, and that's that makes it hard to be really focused on any individual community. Um, but I think we've done it um, in a very real way. And I, I think that the way we've done that is that we don't have like a corporate headquarters. There's no one clinic or place or even community that's more important than any other. They're, they're all run by local people with local providers. It's not, we're not sending people from, you know, the mothership. I mean, our mothership is our mission, right? So that's the place that we are connected. That's the thing that binds us and, um, and, and that's, I like, I, I don't know that people understand how remarkable that is and how uncommon um, it is for an organization to not have a place or a person who tells everybody else what the, what the real deal is. I, one thing I love about it is that, you know, like we're meeting here where today we're in Hayward and like, I mean, two hours before we're like, where are we going to get together? It wasn't like come to Reba's office, you know, not like that whatsoever. Um, so that kind of decentralized, we could be anywhere and we are everywhere. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, well said, Jeremy, you should be in the marketing. <laughs> you're I'm hired. Uh, yes, you're hired. <laughs> right. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. And, and that is like, and I, you know, like at the, when we started this, that I did, we were talking about Harry Truman and you are the, um, you know, you're the CEO, somebody needs to kind of have the final word, but I also know, um, all of us are, I feel pretty empowered to do our own thing, you know, and that you're going to probably be like, sure, sounds great. And that's, I, I don't, I still have a hard time getting used to that because I, you know, in other jobs or careers that I've had, you know, there is that, like, this is the power structure. This is the way it happens. And the way that, um, it is decentralized. It makes it for a very pleasant place to work. I'm glad. I'm really glad to hear that. I, I, I think it's hard for some people and I get that, right? Like, I think in some cases, um, you know, I, I think a lot about the difference between clarity and freedom, right? And and that's that's an important trade-off. Um, clarity is great in some ways, right? I know what I'm supposed to do. I know the expectations are clear. The uh, I like I'm asked to do this thing. I do this thing, and then I get rewarded for it. Or I'm asked to do this thing. I don't do it, and I get not rewarded for it, right? Um, and there, there's a lot of good in that. Right. Um, freedom is a thing we think we want uh, until we have it. And then that means, uh, oops, like now I have to make it up on my own. I have to figure it out myself. And that's not that sounds great until it isn't. And it is great until it isn't. Right. Um, but it is the way that North Lakes operates for the most part. Doesn't mean we never say this is the way you're this is the way you're going to do something because we do. Uh, that right. I mean, there are policies and procedures, and there are best practices. So it's not like everybody's just woo, just do what you want. But right, hey, I'm a new doctor. I'm going to try some new stuff. It's right. not. I don't mean it like that. No, no, no. But I mean, we have so many creative people here, and who have so many good ideas, and so we try to say yes to that as often as we can. And even if we're not going to say yes to it, we really try to listen to it so that we can. Um, take it into advisement, right? As we make the decision about what to do. And I don't know that that's super transparent to everybody all the time, um, but it uh, it is in fact the way that it goes, right? We don't ask everybody all the things all the time because that would then we'd never get anything done. And North Lakes does like to get stuff done. Yes. <laughs> and I think there are times when somebody who... Uh, 
might suggest something that's already been tried. That's got to yeah. be kind of hard to say too. Like, well, we tried that once. I, I really try hard not to say, you know, I'll say this is our experience with that. Um, and, and it, but it's a different day. Right. And so if, um, if we can try it again, then we will for sure. Yep. We, it is a good idea. <laughs> Yes, but it is a good it, good idea, and we and we have thought of that. Like it's so it's not like you're not out of left field, right? Yeah. So I know that North Lakes does do some advocacy work that we try to partner with uh, politicians and political leaders and government agencies. Do you want to talk about that? Could you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, our advocacy work is really important. As you know, Jeremy, who's one of our leaders in advocacy, and I appreciate your uh, expertise there a great deal. Um, so for us, that's really about um, understanding what are the needs of our communities and doing our best to share that with um, the folks who are responsible for um, ensuring that those things happen in our in our elected officials and also being a resource to, to the elected officials to um, answer any questions that they might have because they're trying to make policy and they're, you know, some of them are healthcare professionals, but not all of them. And even if they sometimes they're working on policy that isn't specifically healthcare related. Maybe it's more about, you know, jobs or daycare or whatever, but those are things that impact our communities and that we have a unique perspective. Um, and so we, um, we do our best to make sure that we have good relationships with them so that they know they can reach out to us when they need us um, to ask us questions. And also that we are thinking about what are their priorities and how can we help in advancing those. Um, and the, I mean, I think the end goal of all of that is to make the communities that we live in better. And that just relates back to our vision that we'll have healthy, prosperous, engaged communities where everyone's thriving, right? So it's, uh, that's their goal too. And so th we're their partners and we're on the ground. And, and so we feel like we can be helpful, uh, to them and they can certainly be helpful to us too, as we try to, uh, ensure that everybody has access to meaningful resources. Because Medicaid and Medicare, as an example, are, you know, federal programs, it's very beneficial and state programs. It's beneficial to us to have those relationships I found. Yeah. Yeah. And so from your perspective, uh, as part of that advocacy team, what, what do you think, like, why are you interested in advocacy on behalf of North Lakes? Um, well, I, I can see, I, 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 I think of politics as a little bit of a game, mm. you know, it's a sport in a way and I enjoy sports. So I look at it that way and maybe that's the wrong way to look at it, but I, you know, I, I being I'm a county board member for Bayfield County, so mm -hmm. I'm a supervisor. So I can I and I I had no idea about how what the county did before I would be. I'm like, what? What we do? What? So I enjoy that. Like, hey, this is how you can help people, and we want. So when we talk to a politician, a, a government person, you know, it's nice to be able to like, here's how you can help us mm -hmm. and to be that source. I, I love it, you know, that you can be like, call us, talk to us and we can tell you what, how, how this would help people, the people in your community. I also love that when we have our events that, you know, there's always a good chance there's going to be a Democrat there and a Republican. And, you know, it's kind of like I, 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 I like that clearinghouse. I like thinking about a day and an age that seems to be really gone where people work together to get problems solved. And I look at, um, federally qualified health centers as one of those places. Yeah. So I don't know. That's what gets me excited about. Yeah. That's a really good thing about uh, us, I think, is that um, the the value that we bring is apparent on both sides of the aisle, which is an honor and a privilege and a rare honor at this point. Well, and I think they like it. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, yeah. I think a lot of people want to get back to that as well. And this is a place that that can happen. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like, and it's, I, it, yeah, I could go on and on. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, Reba Rice, thank you so much for being here. It's really great to have you on the North Lakes podcast. Is there anything else that you'd like to say or anything we didn't cover? 
I don't think so. That's a good question. It's really been an honor um, and very fun. Uh, thanks. I, I've never been on a podcast before, of course, so it's very exciting. Um, my my new career podcast. We could tell it. We could, if you ever wanna, you know, devote more time. I'm happy to have you at every one. Oh, you definitely. know, we could like be the morning team. Wouldn't everybody love that? Oh my gosh, that would be hilarious. <laughs> so it's the ding, eight, ding, ding. Right. Can we hit a bell? Okay, I'm never done this before, but on this little funny thing that I have here, let's see. This might be kind of loud. I have this. <laughs> Oh yes. Oh yes. That Sorry. that we need that somewhere. So right. we have to come up with something to say that we can say that. Or okay. have that. There it is. Yeah. I do have one last question for yeah. you. Um what's in your car right now? Oh. Uh a little well not a little, but uh like a twelve by twelve container of tea and coffee and uh, fake creamer and sugar and stuff for meetings in case in case I'm forever the bed and breakfast owner um, that just in case there isn't anything for people to drink. So you have a you have a meeting like snack pack, a little, snack yeah. prep, exactly. snack pack, snack thing. <laughs> yes, I have warm beverages. <laughs> Excellent. Great. A bed. And, I, so you were a bed and breakfast owner? Yes. I. The reason that I moved to northern Wisconsin from um, Chicago via Minneapolis is um, to open a bed and breakfast in Ashland. Seems like a natural career path. Yes. I have had the most straight line career path ever. So go get an English major, then go run a shelter for homeless women with children, then uh, go to a software training company, then go to be a director of development at a church-based organization for homeless people, then go to a marketing firm, then go to uh, own a bed and breakfast in uh, rural in rural Wisconsin, and then become a CEO of a community health center. Like what? Obviously, that's the way that goes. It's a it's your does your alma mater frequently ask you to come in and lecture about how? To, yeah, no. Like the the path? Yeah, no, no. <laughs> I did get asked by this group called Road Trip Nation. I don't remember why how I got connected to them, but they, they try to help kids who are struggling with what they want their career path to be. So they talk to people who are, you know, have been in a profession for a long period of time about how they got there. And I, they did not know what was coming. I, I think they were like, yeah, never mind. Thank you, Mrs. Rice. <laughs> and from your view, I'm going to keep going here. Is that common here at North Lakes? Yeah. So yeah. Don't you think? Yes, but you have a better view of it than I do. Yeah, there's a lot of people who uh, like never were in healthcare before and you know, it's not their jam, right? Yeah. Uh, so it really is about um being with a talented group of human beings and and doing something good and positive. Um, you know, so it's like you were talking about with the politicians, right? Like it's just really nice to have a space where you can do good creative work that's positive um and additive to a community because there are a lot of extractive um, professions, right? And even healthcare can be that, but um, FQHC is really a kind of a special place. So I'm going to credit you with this. Like, I know it's not just you and that's the thing that you would say, but how did you create that? Uh, yeah, I did not. Um, but um, we create it together. How did we create that? Thank you. Much better question. <laughs> I, 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 a little bit magic and uh, and quite a bit of luck, um, but also uh, never underestimate what a bunch of really talented people can do around uh, uh, around the idea of just making things better. It's really as simple as that. Yeah. Um, again, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you for having me, Jeremy. I really appreciate it. Okay, talk to you soon. Okay. All right, bye. Bye. 
Did this make you want to come work at North Lakes? Well, check out our career web page on our website, nlccwi.org, and see if there's a position that fits your skill set. North Lakes Community Clinic is a federally qualified health center that covers a large part of Wisconsin, offering an integrated array of quality services. My name is Jeremy Oswald, and it was so great to talk to Reba Rice, North Lakes CEO, all about our organization and FQHCs. If you have any thoughts about what you heard, drop them into the comment or review section of wherever you are listening and continue the conversation. We'll have another episode of the North Lakes podcast out next month. See you then and thank you for listening.